This is unashamedly one of those good news stories. No one can deny the horrors facing Aboriginal kids in bush towns all over the country. But for some, just a few, there's a chance to escape. And the opportunity is coming from an unexpected source. A number of our top private schools are opening their doors thanks to scholarships for disadvantaged kids. Like many great ideas, it started out small, but it's been so successful, millions of dollars are being raised to extend the scheme. So now, even more of our poorest children can look forward to an education that once only money could buy. On the Nambucca River in northern New South Wales, Dean Buchanan is keeping alive an ancient Aboriginal custom. He's hunting for water worms in just the right rotting log, the way his family have for generations. You want to have a chop? It's pretty easy. Straight down the middle. And he's passing these age-old skills on to his 13-year-old son, Ricky. Wow. Slowly, slowly. Wow. There we go. You got him. They call these slimy critters jiddy, know, and they're a delicacy in these parts. Just give it a quick wash through, and then just shove it straight down your mouth. <laughs> no way. <laughs> One they like to share with visitors. He's still alive. Oh! So. <laughs> Not as tasty as the other ones, but good. Is it? Mm. It's a little salty. Mm. That's quite nice. Get that creamy, mm. creamy taste. That was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, no, that's why I got that. Oh. You don't know what you're missing, Ricky. But Ricky's future does not lie here. <laughs> Come on, Ricky, don't be a wuss. <laughs> Show him that you're a man. I have to eat it then. He's had to leave the Nambucca Valley to break another generational cycle. Well? Good. Yeah? Yeah. One of violence and drunken despair. How does a good education change your future? Because uh, I'd maybe get a better job, then I think I would get up here. So suit and tie in an office? Is that how you imagine your future? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> And this is what Ricky's future looks like. Joey's, St Joseph's College, among the Ivy League of Sydney schools. Ricky's school fees are paid by the Australian Indigenous Education Foundation. They aim to give Aboriginal kids the life-changing education that used to be the preserve of well-to-do white kids. Ricky's in year nine and hopes to go to university to study law or chemistry. When they sat you down and said you're going to come here to this flash city boarding school, what did you say? Um, I said, no, I don't want to go. And what changed your mind? I just thought about the opportunities and uh, the education. And do you reckon this has changed your life? Yeah, I reckon it has a lot. Across town is Kincopple Rose Bay, School of the Sacred Heart, one of the most prestigious girls' boarding schools in the country. And here, Taylor and Zalia Jarrett, from the same impoverished community as Ricky, are mixing with daughters of privilege from Australia's wealthiest families. How do the other girls see you? The girls include us just as if we were one of them. They treat us the same. They just see me as me, like not as Aboriginal girl. Just as me, which is good. I went to Greenwich, Connecticut. But just back from school holidays, some differences are obvious. First we went to Rome, and then to Naples, and then to Florence. And then after Florence we went to Paris. So, so Paris was last? Paris was last. We couldn't climb up um, the towers of the Notre Dame because it was so cold. 15-year-old Taylor has been boarding for two years and feels right at home with roommate Mimi Becker. OK, um, so did you go swimming because it was so hot? Yeah. How so hot was it? 
30 or higher degrees. Oh, it was freezing in Paris and Rome. Even when it rained, it was still hot. It was like humid yeah. and sticky. And, oh. I'm just going to add that now. Thermometer, can we have the thermometer not touching the bottom? Before she won her scholarship, Taylor barely imagined having a career. Now, ambitions are boundless. And we still have about 20 seconds. So you're doing advanced maths, advanced English. <laughs> yeah. And how are you going at science? Um, I got two of the highest marks in the class. What do you want to do when you leave school? I want to be a doctor. <laughs> Taylor, Zalia and Ricky are three of the lucky ones. If they'd stayed here in the valley and their hometown of Barraville, there was little to hope for beyond a cool dip on a hot day. Bring back to him! For the kids that live here, the future is certain and it's all bad. I want to get out of here because I don't want to end up as an alcoholic or addicted to drugs or even fallen pregnant at a young age. Mm. And would that really have been likely to happen to you? Yes, it's happened to most of the people already in, that stayed in Barrel now and don't want it to happen to me. Mm. Here, in the poorest part of town, unemployment is rampant and with such bleak job prospects, it's little wonder many kids simply drop out. People just don't care. They'd rather drink their lives away, get stoned every day. Well, in Barrowville, it, you don't get a very good education and there's nothing to do, so you won't make it anywhere in life. It wasn't so long ago that fences separated black and white students at Barrowville schools. Today, there's a new set of problems. When whole families are unemployed, plagued by drugs and alcohol, it's little wonder that more kids wag school than actually go, and even less surprising that virtually no one finishes high school. Oh, it. Dean Buchanan, a part-time labourer, is determined that Ricky and his brothers get the sort of education wow. he didn't. That's the way to do it. With the same opportunities as anyone else. Just to watch them interact with the, the Asians, the whites, and all the other races there, yeah. like brothers, you know, not strangers, not friends, but like brothers. Just shaking hands and going, how you going, brother, how you, brother? And I just stood back and there was a big smile on my face. And the prize for outstanding achievement in outdoor education to Ricky Buchanan. This is the woman who got Ricky his scholarship to Joey's, his proud grandma, Anne Edwards. She's helped 12 other grandchildren do the same. I get very weepy when it comes to my grandkids, honestly. I really do. And when I saw Rick walk across that stage, I just went, because oh, uh, I was so proud of him, you know, when he walked across that stage. I thought the we must We're waiting for rain. Anne was one of the stolen generation taken away from her parents as a frightened 14-year-old and sent away to Sydney. There are those who argue that the Indigenous Scholarship Program is a modern-day version of the same thing. Stolen generation and my kids today, my grandkids today, is completely, completely different. My kids are going down there for a better education. They're going to be somebody in their lives. They're going to be somebody. And that's the big thing that I'm really, really pleased about, you know? My grandkids are going to be somebody. Some people look at you kids going down to boarding school and say, well, that's another stolen generation. And I don't really think it is. We decided to go. So how can we be stolen if we decided to do it? Because quality education is the key. Craig Ashby is living proof that Indigenous scholarships work. Many Aboriginal children are being born in the seemingly hopeless, vicious cycle. Three years out of Joey's, Craig is studying to be a teacher at Sydney University, emerging as a prominent voice for Aboriginal Australia. The challenge of our generation is to... At 21, he has the confidence to lecture movie stars 
you and me. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Old buddies. And the humility needed to greet the Pope. The spirit of our ancestors are guiding everyone a safe trip here to this meeting place. It really was up to me to make the difference. I had nothing when I went to Sydney. I didn't have a cent to my name and I couldn't read or write and, and I was just so determined to change my life and be better. Be Where? better than what I was. Craig is from Walgett, from the black soil plains and dusty streets of northern New South Wales. And by 14, if you can't read and write, there's not much point sitting in a classroom, so Craig and most of his mates would wag school whenever they could. How did you get out of the top floor? Oh, before, when there wasn't no gauze on, we just used to slide the window back, jump out onto the ledge and then on top of the roof, and then from there, slide down. So after the teacher's finished writing on the board, she turns around and the class is gone? Everyone's gone. <sighs> Do you feel that you were let down here? Definitely. Definitely. I know, I was just so far behind that some people would say, why don't you just let him go and become another statistic and just leave him behind and he'll kind of just drift away in the corner somewhere and we can forget about him. And sadly, despite billions of government dollars spent on Aboriginal education, many are still being left behind. If enough private donors can be found, over the next 20 years, a few thousand kids will get scholarships like Taylor and Ricky. Those lucky few will get what every Australian kid deserves, a great education and the chance to build a better future. And they do that, confident in their culture, dreaming big dreams and knowing just who they are. I am Ricky Buchanan, I am from Nambaka Valley and I am a Goombangi boy. If you live the rest of your life in Sydney, would you still know who you are? Yeah. I'll always know it, I reckon. What would you say if I said, who are you? A uh, little Aboriginal girl from Barraville along the north coast. Will you always be that little girl? Yep. Even if you lived in the city and you were a doctor somewhere here in Sydney? Still be the little girl from Barraville. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.